Number nine, Alex Kyle. Number 17, Bryson Johnson. Number 19, Troy Loggins. Number 22, J.P. Laurier. Number 47, Corey Kettler. Number 71, Cody Kettler. Number 73, Ryan Perry. Number 74, Nielsen Archibald. Number 91, Jalen Krogman. Number 92, Kyle Novak. Goaltender number 35, Kevin Johnson. And starting in goal, number 20, Zach Lee. Coach of RPD, Joe Cook. That's this evening's visitors, RPD. And now the playing lineup for this evening's home team, the Labeda Snipers. Number four, TJ Kavaya. Number nine, Charlie Coles. Number 13, Shane Fox. Number 14, Greg Thompson. Number 20, Brendan Hawkins. Number 22, Tom. Number 38, Kyle Sucher. Number 41, Matt White. Number 
Number 79, Kyle Kramer. Number 97, Jack Cole. Goaltending and coaching, J.P. Susco. And starting in goal, number 33, Troy. That's the playing lineup for tonight's home team, the Lavina Snipers. This is the Narch Pro Championship game here at the 2017 Narch East Coast Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the 2017 Narch Finals here at the Hershey Center in beautiful Mississauga, Ontario. Thank you for watching the Narch live stream. I am Jeremy Ellis and I am joined by my good friend Alex Morrison on the color commentary. And we are here for the final between RPD and the Labeda Snipers. These two teams are playing their third game of the day. They played quarterfinal action. And then semifinals, and here they are after all the dust settles. These are the two teams. They have yet to lose a game. They have won every single one of them, Alex. Somebody's going to lose this one, though. Yeah, absolutely. We have two teams that were 4-0 and after the initial round of play. And then they had a heck of a day so far today. We had the quarterfinal win. We had that semifinal win. That uh, last-minute heroics there with the RPD. And we're able to hold on there at the end. The only loss of the day today was the shootout loss that broke the tie between the number one and number two seed when, when RPD wasn't able to shoot out. But Joe Cook pulled me aside and said, shoot, we're okay with that. Was that a secret? Was that a secret that you just let the cat out of the bag? I didn't necessarily let it out, <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is. You have to win your game. So as far as being okay with it, sure, they had a tougher match in the quarterfinal, having to play a two and two team rather than a one and three team. But they know they have to win their hockey games, and that's what it comes down to. Well, the Snipers had a very tough game against the Black Ice team in the semifinals. Actually fell behind 2-0 in that hockey game. And then Black Ice uh, fell behind 3-2, and then they tied it back up, and then a late goal by the Snipers to take that one 4-3. You know, the Snipers, that was really one of the huge humps because we know what Black Ice have done. RPD still looking for that first Narch Pro Championship. Is that... Wow, that is amazing. They have been to the ship quite a few times. They've just not been able to squeeze that final out and take home a crown. That's incredible stuff. And, and I've been around as long as anyone here, and I am surprised by that stat. Uh, in talking to Joe Cook, he's always confident. He always has a heck of a team. They're always there. They're always in it. They're always that, that wow, these guys can really pull it off here. So I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for words there. But uh, they have the group out there to do it here. Uh, I, I will say that the one big challenge is trying to get pucks past Troy Redmond. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Troy Redmond. Troy Redmond was an addition a couple years ago and really was the MVP of that Labeda Snipers team that won it a few years back when they kind of got back into contention. And Tyler Shaboda came up and filled your role for that second semifinal game. And he said to him, the only question that he has about this RP team and it's not really a question, but the only thing that maybe is a, a smidge of a question is goaltending and, and Zach Lane in between the pipes. Do you think that that's a difference there between Redman and Zach Lane? Well, let me tell you something. Zach Lane showed he's a real deal goalie, not only here in this tournament by going 4-0. He made some incredible saves. And then last night in that pro skills competition, 
he was absolutely lights out. So Zach Lane is the real deal. Sure, maybe he doesn't have the pro championships. Maybe he hasn't played double IHF as a starter. Uh, but, but man, if, I, if I'm playing on a hockey team and Zach's my goalie, I'm, I'm pretty content. Well, we thought we'd have some lower scoring games in the semifinals, and uh, they started to pick up the action, the scoring, so much talent out there on the floor, both offensively and defensively. So we'll get ready to go here. Two 15-minute halves as they switch sides and put their goalies at the long end to start the game. And we are ready to go. It's the 2017 Arch Finals. Snipers in the black and yellow jerseys, RPD in the orange and black with the gray trim, and the faceoff is controlled by Combs. Combs sends it all the way back out into his end. The starting four for the Snipers, White and Combs at number one line, and Thompson and Shane Fox, the two that will come out onto the floor to start it off defensively for the Snipers. Looking over on the RPD side, it's Cody Kettler, Krugman, Spezia and it looks like Novak getting the nod way down at the other end. He's matched up with Combs down there. A couple of St. Louis guys going mano a mano down on the long end of the rink. So if you've followed Narch Pro for any num number of years and you've seen the snipers play, this is what happens. This is how they start the game. If they win the faceoff, they'll sit behind the net, look and see what the other team's doing, how they're matched up, and then look for an opening. Here comes White. White tries to get a little shade there in front from Thompson. Now he pitches it off to Combs. Combs sends it back deep into his own end. A minute has gone off the clock here, 13.54, as it continues to roll. Shane Fox, watched there by Spezia. If there's one person on the floor that can speed with Fox, it's Spezia. Spezia ran right through Kavaya, and Kavaya gives Spezia a shot. <laughs> Officials set the tone, letting those two battle it out in the corner. Puck comes free now to Combs. Here comes Fox the other direction. Fox up across the red line, trying to walk in. Krogman gave him a stick. Fox sends one in on Lane. Lane tried to corral it. Rebound goes right to White, and he sends it back to Kavaya. A little physical play there between Speezy and Kavaya to get things started. And I actually like the message sent by the referee saying, we're going to let you guys rock and roll. We're not going to step in the way unless we have to. A little shove in the back there in the crease. Uh, it was the PJ that slowed down there a bit. Tyler taking advantage of that, knocking him down, and hey, tit for tat. We have PJ do the same thing back to Tyler, and, and off we go. Kyle Kramer out onto the floor for the first time for the Snipers. Here he comes across the middle of the rink. He's looking for some action, going to work down on Cody Kettler. Kyle Kramer, hometown in St. Louis. So a lot of uh, guys that are going to be bragging rights at the bar maybe when they get home. Tommy Bruce back there as well. You got Kramer. You got the Kettler boys over on that side along with Novak. Meanwhile, Bruce brings it back in behind Redmond. 22 sits behind 33, 12-34 left to go in period number one. Still no score. Hawkins out there, number 20 for the first time for the Snipers. He's matched up with Kramer. Those two have worked together well so far. Here's Kramer on the switch. Kramer takes a shot. It deflects, goes right in on lane, and he doesn't mess around as he covers it up for the whistle at the far end. It's interesting. It's two different teams when the snipers change lines. You have Kramer on the floor, plays completely differently. He's in that same role as Jack Holmes. Holmes likes to sit in front of the net all the way 200 feet away. Kramer likes to stay wide. So it, it's, it's interesting watching the difference in style and watching how the teams have to adjust. Kyle is out there watching Fox. Fox gets a step on Kyle now. Kyle's got that stick waving around. Almost caught Fox up high. Good thing he did, and that would have been a minor penalty. And now here comes White back the other direction. White makes a move, tries to sauce it over. Walking right in and losing it there was Suture. Suture slams on the brakes down on the far end. Now he comes back to Combs. So Combs and White out there quickly. This is their second shift, only three minutes into the hockey game. So they're rolling them quickly here for the Snipers. RPD's got that deep bench as well. Let's see what they do personnel-wise. We've seen a couple players make some spell shifts for them. Bryson Johnson doesn't necessarily get a regular shift, but when he's been out there, he's produced. Now here comes Fox. Fox working on Kyle. Nice pass out in front. Combs with the shot, 
And Zach Lane makes the save, and he quickly gloves it as Combs was right there on the doorstep. Very interesting there. Just after I talked about uh, Kramer playing a little differently than Combs, Combs and goes and follows in Kramer's footsteps, moves off to the side, doesn't create a screen there, and it leads to kind of one of the easier saves that uh, Zach Lane's made here in the pro playoffs today. It's a little backdoor action there on the faceoff. Assistant referee Daniel Pecora puts the puck into play and it's won cleanly there by the Snipers. Nice draw there by Kyle Kramer. He does a great job of that. We see the younger Combs out there for the first time. He pitches it back behind the net to Thompson. There you see the extended pressure of RPD now. And they force the turnover because Cavaya's pass up the boards is taken back by Bryson Johnson. Johnson goes down. They continue to play on as Thompson had the stick kind of wrapped around them. Johnson back up. Long pass up ahead. He's got a man in front. There's a shot. Scores. Cruising in and burying it. That's Loggins. And Loggins coming out there. He doesn't see the floor much, but he takes advantage of it here. And he puts his team on top. One to nothing. What a pretty goal there by Loggins. Let's look at it. Long pass over, makes the move on Redmond and buries the backhand goal. Yeah, it was a nice move. He used his speed, gained some space between him and the defender. This all happened when Thompson got his blade in between the skates of the RPD player down at the other end with a delayed penalty. All of a sudden, all the snipers stopped for a minute, had a hard time getting back into the play. It's one was there a delayed penalty? I didn't see the arm go there up. There was a delayed penalty, yes, there was. Okay, I didn't see it. I was actually surprised at first, but as you said, you did see the delayed penalty, and they came back the other direction. Loggins did a great job. I'm surprised they didn't bring it back and try to set things up. Well, I think what happens is because Loggins gets that extra step there, they recognize it and push it forward really quickly. Suture behind the net. Loggins stays out there with some extended action after his goal gives RPD the first lead of the hockey game. That tally coming there, so Loggins on the goal to put the team ahead one to nothing. So RPD pressuring just a bit here. Snipers looking for the equalizer after that goal by Loggins. Long pass up ahead trying to find Suture and Lane out of the net. So Loggins officially on the goal from Bryson Johnson. Bryson and Loggins taking advantage of that timeout on the floor. Nice pass there by Bryson. Here they come back the other direction again. Spezia handed it off. A nice shot there by Perry. Here comes White and Combs back the other direction in a, hur in a hurry. White tries to make the move going wide. Sends the backhand pass up top to Tommy Bruce. Bruce trying to step in and get something going. Bruce circles in behind the cage. Sends a backhand in and that was handled very carefully there by Lane. They chip it up the boards. Here comes RPD back the other direction. Cody Kettler cruising through, looking for a pass. Spezia tries to walk around. Redmond got the twig out to kind of force him wide, and now it's turned over to Combs. Combs working one-on-one. -on -one. Combs taking a shot and rifling it past Lane. Oh my goodness, what a rocket as Jack Combs sends it right over the glove and into the back of the net. We are tied up at one. Let's watch it. He picks it up at his own blue line, races up, uses the man of the screen, and you will not see a harder shot in this entire tournament. Well, what you saw there at the beginning of that replay was Tyler Spezia trying to send it back into his own, own end, fanning on it a bit. Combs realizing that, skating over, picking the puck up, and that one-on-one -on -one with that screen, I mean, there's not a lot of goalies out there that'll be able to stop that and be able to rea react that quickly. Wow, what a hard shot there by Combs. Thompson gets the draw as it was controlled by Combs, the younger one. Charlie Combs on the draw there to win it. Brandon Hawkins takes it and leaves it behind the net to Fox. Fox trying to race up. He's got Novak all over him. Fox gets a step. Novak doesn't quit, though, and Novak gets a turnover. Good hustle there by Kyle Novak. He sweeps it up the boards, trying to get free. They body up there right in front of the penalty benches, and 
Matter of fact, one of the doors pop open there, so the official scoring on that last goal by the Snipers is Combs unassisted. You mentioned that long pass by Spezia trying to clear it. It gets intercepted by Combs just in front of the RPD bench, and he takes it the distance and scores it to make it 1-1. Yeah, not just trying to clear it, trying to send it back into his own end, and that's one of the things that happens when you are sending the puck back the other way. Uh, one of the dangers is if you're not accurate, uh, these, these players out here are good enough that you, when you make that mistake, they're going to capitalize on it. Here's Bruce taking a shot. It goes off a stick. The rebound was laying right there. And here they come back the other direction, does RPD. Here comes Kettler, Kettler walking in. Kettler looking for his shot, and that's fought off and held by Redmond. Funny, that's the exact same spot that Combs scored from coming the other way. You just see the difference. Uh, that's how fast that Combs shot is. Redmond sitting there ready, and that big glove out there to take it. So goals by Loggins and Combs. I received word that Loggins' nickname is Spicoli. So Spicoli on the goal for RPD. He put his team ahead 1-0, but it was answered by Combs. And Combs' goal here, and that's where we stand. 1-1, 7-12 left to go. Lots of extended forecheck pressure here. And again, Spezia tries to send it back. It's intercepted by Combs once again. He seems to have Spezia's number on that back pass. Cavallo with the intercept. Hands it off to White. White tried to thread the needle to Combs. Good stick work there by Bryson Johnson to knock it down. Back to Kettler, and Kettler sets up shot behind his own net. Over halfway through this first period of action here in the 2017 Narch Pro Final. It is a 1-1 score. Puck goes behind the net to Cavaya. Cavaya, long stretch pass. It wraps all the way around to Combs. You'd maybe like to see Zach Lane come out and stop that. He didn't have a chance to get it, though, so Combs circling in on Kettler. Kettler, good job of using the stick. Kettler and Combs come together, and now here comes Corey Kettler. Gives it off to Kyle. Kyle fans on the shot. Cavaya went down to block it. Cody Kettler gets rode into the boards. He end upends himself there. Kyle was on it and sends it back into Bryson Johnson in the RPD zone. So I think you're now going to have these two teams feeling each other out for just a bit of time, looking for a mistake. Uh, rather than trying to press the puck up too much. Keller got it deep in the sniper's end. He had Corey, his brother, out in front. Really didn't see it. All, the snipers almost got caught on a change there. Cal and Hawkins come together on the far side boards as Cal had sent it back into Bryson Johnson. Here comes Archibald the other way. Nielsen tried to feed it in front. And Archie couldn't find his man there. 5.30 left to go here in a tie hockey game first period. Yeah, Nielsen was looking for Corey Kettler there, and Corey just whiffed on it. He actually had a pretty uh, decent opportunity there, that puck going right through the crease, and Redmond's five hole opening up just a bit. If he gets a stick on it, that's a goal. RPD coming back the other direction. This is Perry scores, Ryan. Perry puts run right over the glove. Tyler Svoboda and I talked about it. He's got one of the best shots in the game. Probably just a bit. There you see it. You know, Troy Redmond almost reminds me of Corey Crawford trying to fight it off with that glove, and it may have been deflected and goes up over the glove of Redmond, and that's a go-ahead goal for RPD this time by Perry. Yeah, that was absolutely deflected by Greg Thompson, Thompson. who got his stick out there, and all of a sudden that puck just shoots right up, and Redmond didn't have time to react. Here's another chance now by Perry. And Redmond gives him a pop right there in front. Perry just looks at him and shakes his head. I like it, those two combatants coming together there. Redmond having a word with the officials here just a bit. Three goals already on the board. Corey Kettler gets the assist on the goal by Perry. Face off in the zone of the snipers. Here comes White back the other direction. White working in on Kettler. Kettler forces him wide, sends him behind the net. He's got a man all alone in front. Bruce was by himself, but he couldn't get the pass through. White hangs on to the puck. So Kyle Kramer got the penalty on a roughing call. There's a shot by White. And Zach Lane had to be sharp there. 
White killing off the penalty along with Bruce and Kavaya. 4.29 left to go here. One minute remaining in the man advantage for RPD. Here's Kettler. Kettler works it down low to Kyle. Back up top to Kettler. Now he swings to Spezia. Back to Cody. See the difference in the two penalty kill units between the Snipers and Verbero and how they are defending against this power play. There's a shot. Redmond with a huge kick save. The puck is loose. They continue to bury away at it. And White comes in and pops Kyle as he was trying to shake our foot. And there's the shot right there. Let's see it on the replays. They battle away. Kyle really trying to shovel away at it as White comes in and pops him. Cavallo was down there in the crease as well. So lots of action down in front of Mr. Redmond. 34 seconds remaining in the man advantage. That's uh, PJ Cavallo did this in the semifinal as well. Selling out, just giving his body up for the team and making sure that puck doesn't cross the line. So Combs in to take the draw against Kyle. Combs spins quickly, sends it into the corner. Kyle does a good job of batting it back up top to Kettler. Good effort there by Alex. Now it comes up to Cody Kettler. He's watched there by Combs. Sends it down low to Novak. Novak's pass is deflected off the stick of Kavai. Only 15 seconds remaining in the power play. Now Kettler and Spezia switch spots. Spezia walks in to Kettler. Kettler's shot goes right into the midsection of Tommy Bruce. Combs tried to clear it. It goes on the stick of Kyle. Feeds it in front to Novak. Novak tried to get it to Kettler on the back door. Kyle and Kavaya race forward on the far boards. They bang into one another. Novak has it. Him and Kavaya come together. They battle away for it. Puck is still loose. No whistles. They try to break it free. Finally, Kramer's got it. It's a three on two developing. He's got Bruce coming into the play. Can he get it over to him? Instead, he tried to go for Combs. Missed the mark. 3-10 left to go here in the first period. Our score is 2-1 RPD. This is Combs threading it over to Tommy Bruce. Bruce trying to work through the middle. Tries to make a move around Kyle, and it's taken away. Now here comes Spezia back the other way with speed. He's got Combs chasing him down. Spezia lost the puck, and we're going to have a penalty on Combs for a hook as he pulled the backhand of Spezia off the puck. Combs not happy with it. And RPD will go back on the power play once again. Yeah, that's a good call. You have to make it. You have Spezia there with a shot. And he went and yanked right on the elbow of Spezia as he's trying to take that shot. He might not be happy, but there's no chance for Spezia to get the shot off. And you have to make the call there. 2.49 left to go here in period number one. RPD on top and with the man advantage. They lead this hockey game 2-1. to one. White in to take the draw. It's won by Kyle. Armour who sends it down low to Kyle. Armour you steps and scores! Actually, that's Bryson Johnson. Check that. Number 17. And Bryson Johnson gets the layup. And it's a 3 to 1 RPD time. The penalty proving costly against the snipers. Wow, there you see it on the replay. What a snipe there by Bryson Johnson. And he is putting in some quality minutes in this hockey game. So Johnson's goal puts RPD on top here, three to one. Here comes White back the other way. He's smarting just a bit. Let the official know about that last call. White sends one in. It goes off the crossbar. Rebound scores. Suture. Oh, they are the end here now. A quick answer by the snipers. White took the shot. It goes off the crossbar. And Suture right there to bang it home. It's now 3-2 to two at 2.13. Left to go in period number one. Yeah, the snipers there feeling the pressure, being down by two, wanted to get one before the end of this half. So they have three guys going to the net all at once. And that's what good things happen when you crash the net. And exactly what they needed. Only down by a goal here with two minutes to go in the first half. Puck is gloved by White. He gets it back to himself, so he sends it all the way down. No infraction for a hand pass. Now here comes Shane Fox. Fox trying to get a step. 
Fox cannot get the step on Novak. Fox takes a shot and that one rings wide of the net. Long rebound taken there by White. White uses the body to shield off Larmiu and now it's taken back behind the net. Suture. Sucher with the puck, comes up the far side, boards to Fox. Under two minutes to go, 135 remaining in this first period. Fox trying to weave his way through, using some screens. Fox gets a step, Fox shot, scores! Shane Fox came right off the hip of Matt White who provided the screen, and he goes right in and scores at home past Zach Lane. Here it is again, look at the screen by White. Fox rolls off it and beats Zach Lane glove side. It's all knotted up at three at 128 of the first period. What a first half of action. And what a great individual effort by Fox. Skates up, RPD's fault though, they let him go uncontested. There he goes, there he goes, and then all of a sudden he has Zach Lane moving to his right and then shoots back the other way. So goalie moving to his right, shoots left. Almost impossible to catch back up to it. So that two goal lead for RPD evaporates quickly. Here comes Loggins. Loggins has got a goal. He was looking for number two. It goes wider than that. Long rebound tracked back down by Archie. And Archie sets things back up for RPD. Perry gives it back to Arcebal now. He sends it to the far side. Here's Larmiu with it across the red line. One minute remaining here in the first half. There's a hard shot by Larmiu at rest behind the net. Loggins on it first, tracks it all the way down. There's a race down the boards for it. Matt White is all over Arcibal. Here comes Archie. Archie takes a shot. It goes off the skate of Kavaya. Archie took a look. He wraps it all the way around the boards. Matt White sends it across. Could be a break. There's 34 seconds left. Combs up ahead of the pack. He fed it out front. White shot, and that may have hit the post or deflected off the goaltender. 24 seconds remaining. Hard to tell from way back here. Our broadcast position is at the far end of the rink. There's a steal now. Oh, and Hawkins almost got set free in motion off that intercept. Now it goes back behind the net to Kettler. 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Outlet pass up ahead to Kyle. Crossing over, gaining speed, going wide. Kyle's shot gets blocker to side. They race forward in the corner, and that'll do it as Combs slaps it out to the middle of the rink. And after 15 minutes of play, we are tied up at three goals apiece. The Snipers and RPD will come back for the second half here in just a moment. All right, 
I hit the oxygen tank, Alex, because I've got to catch my breath after a thrilling first 15 minutes of action. We are tied up at three here between RPD and the Snipers here in the 2017 Narch Final Pro Championship. Tell you what, something about this rink, <laughs> Alex, that just brings out the best in these pro championship games. Yeah, this is this has been the home to many a barn burner and just memorable match and we're in for one here we still have this 14 and a half minutes in a tie game this could go any which way well the one narch pro championship game that i got to ref was back in 2009 that was an overtime win by the mudcats against bauer mission at the time 14 12 left to go here in the second will this game be headed to overtime it's tied up now three goals apiece rpd and the snipers who will go ahead next? Novak tries to shake and bake. It gets knocked away from him by Kavaya. Matt White with the puck the other direction. He's got Combs all the way down there. Feeds the puck up to him. He takes that off angle shot. And Zach Lane has to be careful. Feeds out front to Suture. Suture is dangerous. He's got a goal in this hockey game. Suture tries to spin free of Krogman and ends up spinning right back into the defender. So I'm going to make a bold prediction here saying that it's going to be an individual assignment that's missed that's going to lead to the game winner. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Puck squirts all the way back out on the long rebound. Suture slams on the brakes. As he could tell, some of his teammates needed a breather. Combs heads off. Hawkins back out there. Keep an eye on him. He's got the capability of scoring a big goal for the Snipers. Sends it back to Suture. They continue to make changes, Matt White. So the matchup offensively now, the two forwards, Kramer and Hawkins, paired up together. We've seen Kramer go with Charlie Combs. He's out there with Hawkins now. We've played a couple minutes here in the second half. Long pass up ahead. Suture trying to get control of it. Kramer comes in to back him up and picks up possession of the puck. This is a lot of what this game is about. You, you, having possession keeping your head up and trying to beat someone one-on-one, -on -one, whether or not you have the puck. If you don't have the puck, then you pick your head up and hopefully your teammate sees it, recognizes it, and gets it up to you. Not only that, but the long stretch pass, which the Labeda Snipers have a patent on. Here's Thompson trying to go wide, shoveled it up ahead to Hawkins. Hawkins trying to get around Arcebal. Arcebal does a good job of keeping possession of the puck. Now Hawkins swipes it all the way back to Thompson. He lets Fox pick it up, and he'll send it back into his own end. 12-15 yeah. left to go here in our second half, still 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, Archie on this RPD team, uh, new addition. He was on the Snipers last year, and he brings uh, some of this veteran leadership. He's uh, played at many different levels of both ice and roller hockey and is contributing quite a bit to the team. Here's Fox up ahead of the play. He's got a man up front, and Hawkins is denied there by Lane. Now, I believe that was uh, someone in front there that deflected it off of his... Skate, yeah, I think that was Corey Kettler with his right boot kicking it out there. And uh, the puck never did get to Zach Lane. And there was a big opportunity back the other end, and Redmond flashes the leather there. All right, any story behind that roster switch with Archibald coming over from the Snipers to RPD? Wow, oh, yeah, that's put me on the spot there, and I don't have the inside information on that other than the fact that uh, Joe Cook has known Archie for a long time and uh, it, it may be a relationship thing with them. All righty. Just thought I'd see if maybe there was any insight there. And maybe if I do have some, I keep it to myself. Here. Okay. Here's a long pass up ahead. Bruce in all alone. Bruce trying to make a move right out in front. They bang away at it. Combs smacked at a loose puck. As him and Johnson come together and it goes into the glove of Lane. As he had to be in great position there as it bounced right out in front. A missed assignment, though, because Tommy Bruce got up ahead of the pack. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about, missed assignments. They don't happen often, but when they do happen, these, these players recognize it and get the puck up to that player that's by themselves. And very often, that's going to be a goal. Clock continuing to roll now. 11.15 left to go. We'd like to thank all of you that are somewhere somehow watching this hockey game i've seen pictures of people with a couple cervezas sitting out by the pool with the computer open so lots of great ways to stay in tune here with the 2017 narch finals over 350 people watching this game right now 
as they turn back the other direction. They came here to see a good one, and we have provided that. 3-3 three, three our score. Here comes Spezia. Spezia shot right in on Redmond, and looking for a rebound there, and Redmond covers up for a whistle. 10-43 left to go here in period two. Redmond pretty solid here in this game. I mean, there are two goals that he let in that he had no chance on. That one deflection by Thompson uh, that ended up up and over his glove. He is... He's ready for this. He is going to do everything he can to keep his team in it. Face-off controlled in the Snipers end by Kramer. He has done a great job of winning draws here for the Snipers team. Here comes Fox. Fox trying to get a step. Goes around Corey Keller. He's got two players up ahead of him. Tried to feed it through to Kramer. Good stick there by Krogman. Now Kyle back the other direction. They've got a break coming. Here it comes Nielsen. Nielsen working up into the circle, slamming on the brakes. Pretty amazing how well these pros can just stop on a dime out here on the tiles. And Archie does it just as good as anyone in the game. Now they have Krogman back behind his own net. So RPD taking a play out of the uh, sniper's book, sending someone all the way down the other side of the rink and looking to see if there's an opening for a stretch pass. Kyle sent it back in behind his net. Lane has to come out momentarily to play it. Larma, you will reset, they make changes. Spezia is up off the floor. Let's see if they can get him in the wheels rolling now. Spezia's got some space. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to let him get that speed built up. Here he comes working through the slot. Spezia tries to go wide. He lost the puck. Good play there by Suture to ride Spezia off the puck. Spezia is down in a heap. And not sure if he got bumped just a little bit. He seems to be getting up kind of slow. I think he and may have taken an incidental stick there as he went down, not to the head, but to the ribs. And pretty pretty darn painful. But uh, he is a Spezia. We know Chad, his brother, very well and know that they can take a licking and keep on ticking. There's a rumor that Chad may be coming across the border up here to play over 30. So That makes me feel old. Well, if we see Chad, well, I'm sure we'll hear Chad before we see him. <laughs> but uh, it should be a great time next weekend if he makes his way up here. 9.25 left to go here in the second period. Snipers control that draw at the center of the rink. It was moved outside the zone as it was covered up by Spezia. The other thing is that faceoff win by the Snipers continue to give them possession, but that long pass was intercepted. This is Cordy Kettler on the back door. Beautiful pass to Novak, who buries it. It's a stretch pass gone wrong. You Let's see where we pick it up here. So this is right where RPD is able to take the puck back and that quick pass across the slot. And there's no way Redmond's going to make it over there to, to cover that side of the net. Wow, what stands out to me, there's a little miscommunication between Thompson and Kavaya. Both the defensemen went to that fake side and they left the player on the backside, Novak, and you don't want to leave him by himself five foot in front of the goalie, and he buries it there to give RPD the lead. They've had the lead a couple times in this hockey game. Each time, the snipers have battled back. So with 8.45 left to go, RPD has the lead. It is the second period. Here comes Matt White now. Matt White looking for some space. White sending it in on lane, and that one right into the goaltender's chest. So a good crowd on hand here in the arena. A good crowd on hand at home. Numbers continue to creep up here on YouTube watching this hockey game on our live stream. Loggins took the draw and went down. He is back up on his feet. Now they twist it over to Bryson Johnson. Johnson working up the floor. 8.20 left to go here in our second period. RPD in control at the moment. They lead this hockey game 4-3. They have the puck. Here comes Loggins. Loggins breaking up the left side. Sauces one to the far side to Bryson Johnson. Johnson puts it in a skate. Now he twists it back to Krogman as they continue to rag the puck back in their own end. We talked about this during the game that you did with me in the first semifinal, but also Tyler Svoboda, who's got a mind second to none here in the roller hockey game. He eats, breathes, lives, and sleeps it. And he said he would rather have his team work the puck up in the offensive end instead of the defensive zone. Here you see Combs. Combs back with it the other way. There's a big hard shot by Hawkins that 
stunned Zach Lane just for a moment. This is exactly why. Uh, you have the turnover happen. A turnover in your defensive zone is much harder to recover from. A turnover in your attacking zone gives you time to come back and recover. There's obviously that long stretch pass that can happen, sure, but I would take that chance all day and have the puck 175 feet away from my goal rather than have some pressure, have someone come get in the way, and all of a sudden I'm trying to scramble to get back with a puck 25 feet away. Well, more and more it seems that these teams, especially at the higher levels, like to play keep away in their own end. Here's Combs trying to twist one towards the net. Matt White quickly on it for the Snipers. White sends it all the way back down in his end, and Redmond has to be careful playing there. there. Spezia bearing down on him. White has it, now he sends it back behind his net. Here's P.J. Cavaya with it. Cavaya sends it up ahead to White. Here comes Whitey trying to go wide on Archibald. Whitey trying to reach, trying to wrap it back out in front. It's handled there by Larmayu. Larmayu had it taken off his stick there by Combs, and they send it back to Cavaya. Looks like Matt White may have hurt himself there, taken a little bit into the boards, and uh, he, is, he was ginger getting back up, and he's making his way slowly over to the bench. So we'll keep an eye on him as he heads over to his team's bench. 6.40 left to go here. They can ill afford to lose their top goal, goal scorer here on this sniper squad. In doing so, they're going to need somebody else to step up their game. Who will it be? Will it be Brandon Hawkins? He circles behind the net. Suture's there with it. Suture waiting. Officials finally tell him to move it. He does so up ahead to Combs. Combs is out there with Hawkins. So you got two lethal wrist shots out there at the same time. Now they hand it back to Suture. 6.15 left to go. Snipers with the puck, but trailing on the scoreboard by one goal. Now Cavaya, long stretch pass up ahead to Hawkins. He tried to feed it through to Kramer. Kramer and Larmayu battle for it over on the far side boards. Larmayu sweeps it behind to Archibald. Archibald gets rode off the puck by Hawkins. Puck is right out in front. Kavaya, and there's a shot there by Kramer. Puck was rolling, and it goes up and over the glass. Well, that was a great no call there by the official. Knocked Archie off balance, but definitely not a tripping penalty there. And uh, just for those of you at home that are watching, looking over at the bench, it looks like Matt White has grabbed his stick and is going to be coming out at some point here. It does look like he's ready, so uh, that, that's a good thing for the snipers. A little bit of creeping in on the backside by Tommy Bruce. So they wave out the center. They drop it down quickly. And Hawkins wins it back to Shane Fox. Clock continues to roll now on the side of RPD. They lead this hockey game 4-3. to three. Krogman and Kramer down here deep in front of the net. Here comes Tommy Bruce. Bruce sweeping wide, trying to feed it up front to Kramer. Kramer sends it back now to Hawkins. Hawkins is watched there by Kyle. Over on the near side to Fox. Fox walking in, Fox weaving his way through. Hawkins trying to break free, there's a shot right on, the puck is loose. Lane is trying to locate it, instead it pops out to Cody Kettler, and Kettler up ahead of the pack. He really doesn't want to press the issue, no one's up there with him, he gets rode off the puck by Shane Fox. Kettler had no help, and the snipers did a good job surrounding him and not allowing him to pitch it back into his own end. Here comes Fox now. Fox trying to go wide on Kettler. That shot set towards the net. Kramer digging away there, battling with Kyle. And Zach Lane out of his net. We are under five minutes to go. 4.54 remaining in the second half. Well, RPD is sitting back a little bit here, not being that aggressive going at the puck, letting the snipers take it to him. And if that continues, the snipers are definitely good enough to score here and tie this game. So RPD, Joe Cook may have his guys be a little bit more aggressive in trying to get that puck back. Bryson Johnson over skating it in his own zone. White couldn't hang on to it though, and it's taken back by Spezia. Spezia trying to get the wheels going. He's got the legs churning up across the red line, working one-on-one. -on -one. Kavaya rides him off the puck. Spezia retreats and sends it back to Bryson Johnson. Yeah, that's, that may be exactly why Spezia was sent out on the floor right now. He has that speed, and now he heads over to the bench. Well, Spezia is a player that can play keep away all by himself. Archibald leaves it there. They work it back up the floor. Here they come back the other direction, does RPE, trying to send it in front. They were looking for Kyle. Novak on it in the corner. Now he sends it out front to Bryson Johnson. Johnson bangs it off the board all the way back into his own end. Archie back there with it. He's watched by Combs. 
Archie takes it, banks it off the boards around Suture. Can he get it? Yes, he does. He walks in on White. We got a two-on-one. He lost it for a second, allows White to get back in the play. It was actually a three-on-one. And now here comes White the other direction. White seems to have the wheels working just fine as he cuts back across the middle. Gets free shot, and it goes right in on the chest. I know he was trying to go five-hole there. And White wishes he had that one back as he had an opening, and it shot right into the gut of Zach Lane. Yeah, that whole play was started, though, by P.J. Kavaya. Down on his knees, gets on one skate, one knee down. Perfect backhand pass across the rink to White, who's able to bring the puck down. Big face-off now inside the RPD zone. And Combs, just like his brother, takes a big face-off when they get tangled up on the draw. These two players still battling for it. They're trying to get them separated. It's Combs and Kyle. Here comes the play the other direction. Shane Fox right out in front. Combs tried to get a rebound. Let's see if they can get it going the other direction. And Perry did not want to take it that way. He could have had a break perhaps, but didn't want to make the effort. Now it comes all the way back up top to Larmayu. Circles back into his own end. Clock continuing to roll. It's getting dangerously close to double zero here. 3.05 remaining in the second period. RPD leading the snipers at this point, 4-3. Here's Kettler with it at his own end. Watch there by Hawkins. Sends it off to Novak. P.J. Cavaya way down at this end of the rink as they play a very tight man-to-man. -man. Now there's a missed assignment. Archibald was up ahead of the play. They swing it back over to Spezia. Spezia fires it all the way back down now to Novak. Clock continuing to roll, 2.35 left to go. Here comes Novak. He's got a step on Hawkins. Novak working, going back the other direction on White. Takes a stick, puck goes over into the corner. Novak gets rowed off the puck, stolen away by the snipers. Here comes White with it. White up across the red line, working down the right side. White trying to get the step. White sending a backhand hard towards the net, and he shovels it up off the pads of Lane and into the netting. 2.15 left to go here in period two. It actually looked like that puck may have been pegged for the top corner of the net, and Zach Lane's top of his goalie stick got a piece of the puck and uh, sent it up and over, and, and great positioning there by Lane, keeping his team in the lead. So a late change by RPD as they get Krogman out there. Sucher and Krogman had both crept in on the backside in the faceoff controlled by the Snipers. We'll keep an eye on Redmond now as they get possession of the puck. Jack Combs way down at this end. Here's Fox trying to get a step. Fox really has got the legs working, using his body to shield it. No movement yet by the goaltender. Sucher sends one in. He really didn't get all the synthetic material on it, though, as he sent it towards the net, and Zach Lane covers. I think Sucher was uh, hoping that Combs was going to crash the net a little bit harder, create a bit of a screen. But Combs had slowed down just a bit. The screen never happened. So it was an easy save for Zach Lane. So let's see what they send out here. They got Bruce and Kavaya out onto the floor now. Combs and Kyle in to take the draw. Kyle wins it, but it ends up on the stick of Matt White. White had it bounce just a bit. White turned one and ripped it towards the net, but it goes off the shin pad of Kettler. 1.45 left to go here in regulation time. Sweeping across the floor now is Bruce. Good communication there between Bryson Johnson and Kettler as they kind of made a switch. They continue to battle in front of the net. Kyle and Combs. Combs and Kyle lock up with one another there. Kyle has a, a hold on his stick as the shot is deflected up into the netting. And it looks like the Snipers are going to use their timeout. 1.26 to go here in the second half. Well, both teams still had their timeout available to them, so the Snipers will use it first at this point. All right, here's our game reset. 4-3 to three our score. RPD on top of the Snipers. 126 remaining in period two. So Joe Cook, the head coach of RPD, you see him there talking to his troops. He still has his timeout in hand. JP Susco, the backup goaltender slash associate head coach over there talking to the snipers. Well, they're gonna have to think at some point about getting the goaltender Redman out of the net. I think if you're the snipers, what you do is, obviously you're trying to win the faceoff first and foremost. 
I don't think you pull Redmond first. I think you wait. That's, you let about 30, 30 to 40 did. seconds go by. I, I had this conversation I, with Tyler. I'd rather understand. have the extra guy out there to I, win the draw. To win the draw. I, so th I really think that RPD isn't going to press all of their guys into the face-off circle. So you have one of the best guys in the game of roller hockey taking your face-off here in Combs. If he wins that back and RPD comes charging into the circle, uh, shoot, you have a tie game. Now, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Redmond is out in the slot right now. All right, Combs wins the draw. And he won it back. Goes all the way back to Hawkins. Hawkins gives it up to White, and Redmond makes his way gingerly over, so he's off the floor at 115. The extra attacker out there for the snipers. White with the puck. Here we go, folks. 108 left to go. With the puck are the snipers. Back up top to Fox. Fox working around the perimeter to Hawkins. Hawkins, cross side pass. White sends it in. Oh, Combs tried to hit his little brother back out in front. White inside the circle. They circle it down low to Combs. Combs back up top to Fox. Here's Hawkins scores! The one-timer beats Zach Lane, and we are tied at four with 49 seconds remaining in the second period. What an rocket by Hawkins. Placed perfectly. A little bit of extracurricular activity, and I, if I'm the snipers, I go get Charlie Combs, hug him, and get him back to the bench. He does not need to take a penalty here. The snipers have tied it up here with less than a minute. Wow, amazing. They put the extra attacker out there. I talked about Brandon Hawkins. Will he be the guy that steps up? He is the guy that steps up. And with 49.9 seconds remaining in the hockey game, he ties this game at four. Timeout RPD. Wow. Well, we have an exciting contest on our hands here. 4-4 four, four our score after the game tying goal by Brandon Hawkins at the 49.9 second mark of the second half of our regulation time. Here comes White. White the other direction. Saucing it over. Tried to get it to Combs and Speezy at the last second knocked it away. Still plenty of time for either team to put on the go-ahead goal. 35 seconds left, but it is the Snipers with possession of the puck. Showing their championship mental fortitude here. Wow, here we come back the other direction. Who is going to win this $15,000? $20,000 up for grabs total. $15,000 for the winner. $5,000 for the runner-up. 12 seconds, 10. Here's maybe one last chance for the Snipers. White across the red line, six seconds, five. White shoots one wide of the net. Three seconds, two, one, and that will do it as the puck is sent in on Redmond, and we are going to overtime. Well, I tell you what, we are going to take a break. We're going to head to overtime, and I am sure there are some rousing games of Pass the Cup going on in the stands. People taking a little wager on who's your horse, who's going to get that game-winning goal. It's a goal worth $15,000, Alex. Who do you got? Do I get one from each team, Jeremy? Sure, why not? All right, so if I was to take one guy from each team, I would have to take Tyler Spezia uh, if I'm looking at RPD. And if I'm the, uh, looking at the snipers, you're not going to believe this. I take Greg Thompson. Okay. Sentimental favorite there. You're taking the old horse in the barn, giving him one more shot before he turns into glue. I can understand that. <laughs> All right, here's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Cal Novak for RPD. I like that. And over on the snipers, I'm just going to take Chalk and take Matt White. No, but see, now that's that's easy. That's what everyone else is taking. Sure, right sure. <laughs> see, I go out on a limb here. Well, 
it, no matter what. This hey, is, I gave you first pick. You could have yeah, snagged no, fair, them too. Fair enough. Uh, so no matter what, this has been an epic game. It's the culmination of what's been one heck of a three days of pro hockey. And I, I don't think you could ask for any better than this, Jeremy. No, this is right up there with some of the best pro finals I've seen. Like I said, I had a chance to be part of the one in 2009 that went to overtime. And here I am eight years later. And we are right back in overtime once again. This is super exciting. I'm sure all the people back home watching this one, we are cruising up the charts on our views. They are excited as well. So they play a continuous 15 minutes of overtime. Goaltenders do not switch ends, so they don't have to go the length of the rink on a possible delayed penalty. Let's hope that there are no penalties here in overtime. And the snipers get that opening draw, and they are out there. You got Combs, that full length of the rink just sitting down there he's getting babysat there by Kettler and here comes White let's see if he can get something going the catalyst for the Labeda snipers up across the red line working in on Spezia White takes a shot it goes up high it bounces right there White bounces into the official he loses his whistle the whistle's down on the floor that's all right he doesn't need that whistle for this overtime hopefully anyway here we go here comes my guy Novak Novak up the floor across the red line waiting for some help He's got a man that just came out there. Novak undresses a defender. Novak walks right in, and Redmond makes a save. Both get goaltenders sharp here in the early going of overtime. Kettler comes away with the puck on the rebound. Up ahead to Novak in the offensive zone. Twists one back the other direction now. Now they leave it up for Kyle. Kyle working the outside of the circles. Kyle forced outside by Fox. We've played a minute, 20 seconds of overtime here in the 2017 Narch Pro Championship game. Here comes Krogman. Krogman leaves it off. Novak. Novak gets a step. Novak tries to center in front. And he couldn't get the one-timer there. Loose puck is picked up by White. White across the red line. He's been out there for a long bit of time here. White may need a change. He's going to send it back down into his own end. And there you see Fox and White and Jack Combs. I think he's going to make his way over there to the bench as well. Let's see if they slow things down and wait for those changes. Kramer almost jumped the bench early as... Combs was in no big hurry to get over there. That was a long shift, but a lot of communication there by the snipers. You saw Matt White really kind of taking charge out there, letting Kavaya know who he had, who he was supposed to take. There is a chance on the turnover. Nice pass drop back off. They leave it back up top. Archibald goes down low for Kyle. Kyle tries to jam it in. The puck is still there. No whistle. And finally, the official toots his horn there as Redmond able to get the glove on top of it. That was a good job, good positioning there. That puck was bouncing around a little bit loose right there at Redmond Skate. You can see it there on the replay. They keep jamming at it, and Redmond's finally able to cover it up. Look at the job Redmond does to keep the skate outside of the pipe. What a move by Kyle, though, on the spinorama to get a, even a scoring chance at that one. All right, Kramer in and wins the draw cleanly. Nice job by Kyle. He might not get the goals like he used to, but what he is providing is good veteran leadership and excellent face-off work. They turned it back over to RPD, though, and now they have it with Larmeru back behind Zach Lane. Oh, man, I can't wait. I'm, I am in anticipating an exciting conclusion here in overtime. Here comes Spezia, your guy up across the red line. Sends it back to Larmeru. It hops over his stick. Not a lot of pressure being applied. Hawkins comes down and gives him a look. Matt White already back out on the floor for the Snipers. So, Jeremy, what I think everyone at home is hoping for, uh, no matter who you're rooting for in this match, is to see a nice, clean goal to finish this game. All right, here comes Novak. Novak had the step. Good stick work there by Fox. Novak and Kavaya come together. Spezia tried to glove it down. White had it, lost it. Kavaya reps it up the boards now to White. White is out there with Hawkins, his usual running mate. Combs is still on the bench. Here comes White. White takes a shot, and nice kick save there by Zach Lane, who had to be sharp. That had to feel good as he kicked that one aside. Here comes Larmeru. Larmeru making a move. Puck goes right into the slot. Larmeru on it first. Good hustle there by JP to get possession of the puck. Yeah, whoever scores this goal, that's going to be a $10,000 goal, the difference between winning and losing this game. 11 minutes to go in the overtime, but it's the first one that wins. We don't even know if they made any side bets between the two teams. That's been known to happen in years past with a winner take all. Here comes Corey Kettler trying to dangle through the slot. A turnover, a two-on-two -two the other direction. White hustling back the other way. He's got Combs working his way to the front of the net. Leaves it for Combs. Combs sweeps one towards the net. Kettler got in front of it. Kettler and Combs do battle for it. Kettler comes away with the puck. 
Kettler pitches up ahead now to Kyle. Kyle working one-on-one, -on -one, going wide on Bruce. Bruce takes him down in the corner. Those two players hit the skids. They come away with it, does Suture the other direction. Suture wanted to get it up ahead to Combs. Good coverage there by Kettler on the backside. Now Suture walking his way through. He's got a goal in this hockey game. 10.35 left to go, four and a half minutes off the overtime clock. Our score is tied up at four goals apiece. You know, that play back down the other end uh, about a minute ago now with Kettler uh, st staying with Combs was just veteran. It would have been very easy for him to turn, follow to White, and then that White pass back to Combs. Kettler was right there in the way. Otherwise, that would have been that probably would have been the game winner right there. So Suture resting just for a second behind his net. The officials are going to start to bark at him just a bit to get the puck moving. Closing in on 10 minutes remaining here in our first overtime. Now Charlie Gomes sweeps behind Suture. Suture still resting back there behind the net. The official down that direction, Mike Sarter. Seems to be communicating. Good job by RPD keeping Suture back there. I think as long as that RPD player stays in or at the crease, uh, it's going to be kind of hard to force the snipers to move. And here they come, though. This is Fox. Fox up ahead to Hawkins. Hawkins rips it all the way back down to Kavai. Kavai let it go because he wasn't sure if his teammate was off the bench and he wanted to make sure they didn't get a too many men penalty. Smart play there by PJ. Yeah, that's a guy that's been around obviously. He knows it's going to be close. Why even chance it? You know it's going to be safe back in your own end, so just let it go back. So Kabaya sets up Fox as Fox comes back across the slot. Here comes Shane Fox with a look and a solid position save there by Lane as it hits him square in the chest. I think Fox was hoping that Charlie Combs would do that quick turn and uh, make a beeline for the net and hope to tip it in front because uh, if he, he sure did have a little opening there and if he was able to do it, that would have been Charlie Combs with a game-winning tip. So face-off taken by Charlie Combs. Good hustle off the draw and sweeps it all the way back down into his own end. Fox with the puck all the way back down in his own end zone now behind. The goaltender, Redmond. Clock continuing to roll. 8.45 left to go here in our first overtime. It is the 2017 Narch Pro Final. Joined by Alex Morris and I'm Jeremy Ellis bringing it to you here on the Narch live stream. Word is getting out on the street of how good this hockey game is and more people start to tune in. Here comes Brandon Hawkins. Hawkins sweeping across the red line. Trying to get something going. It's sent back into his zone to Shane Fox. Jeremy, I think people are so entertained by us. They're here in the building with their phones listening to us on the live stream. They could be doing that. You can never really get too much Jeremy Ellis and Alex Morrison. If you say you get too much, you're lying. Shane Fox with the puck. We have played just about seven minutes here of this first overtime in the 2017 Narch Pro Final. Will it end here? Matt White has the puck, slamming on the brakes at the hash marks. Sending it back in the middle of the rink now to Combs. Combs turns, gives a little flick of the wrist, and it ends up on the stick of White. Combs gives him a little bit of a screen there on Archibald. Here's a shot. Oh, and that one just missed the far side. What a quick pop there by White. Now they've got Spezia cruising up the floor the other direction. Spezia rifles one wide of the net. That one went high off the glass. A quick change, and here comes Whitey back the other way. He's got a three-on-two with Bruce. Whitey tried to feed it in front. Combs goes down. It went off the skate of Kettler. Kettler continues to do the little things out there. Here comes Shane Fox now the other direction. Fox walks right in, and that shot goes up high off the blocker. It almost went out of play. Instead, Kettler gets the turnover. It hands on the stick of White. White right out in front to Fox, and now there's a break the other direction for RPD. This is Krogman. Krogman across the red line. Leaves it off for Cody Kettler. Back to Krogman. Krogman overskates it. Here comes RPD. They are trailing the play. Back checking Combs. Combs has it. Intercepted there by Krogman. Some sloppy play. Chances at both ends. There's a knuckler and Redmond gets it and paddles it to the corner. Off the stick of Kyle. Here comes White back the other direction and now he'll send it back to Suter and I'm going to catch my breath here for a second Alex. That was a good minute and a half flurry of action there. You know what, you you might call it sloppy, but I would call it great defense that created a lot of these turnovers. Here's a chance now for RPD. They're trying to twist and turn. They send one towards the net. It deflects up in the air. They try to kick it through. Kavaya gets it. Feeds it up the boards. Here comes Kramer. Kyle Kramer, he scored in overtime before the Narch Pro Championship. This time he just whacks it wide of the net. 
Back the other way on the long rebound. Here comes RPD walking up the floor. Trying to go wide. Corey Kettler gets knocked down on the puck. He maintains possession of it, though, as he got a glove on it. It's stolen away by the snipers. Here comes Kramer. Kramer with the puck, twisting back into his own end and sending it over to Kavaya. That last time Kramer came down the floor, I had visions of Florida. When yes. he scored that game winner in overtime and then skated the length of the rink, throwing everything he had on his body off. And it was one heck of a celebration. Quite possibly the best celebration I've seen in a roller <laughs> hockey game. It reminded me of Theo Fleury back in the playoffs in the NHL years past. 535 remaining here in period number three. We are still knotted up at four goals apiece. Here comes number four and number one. It's 41, Matt White across the slot. White takes the shot! And the goaltender Lane really didn't get a look at it, but it went high and over the net. That was a dangerous chance there for White as he used the screen of his player and the opponent in front. Now this is Tommy Bruce circling back in his own end, forced to retreat. It's amazing what a difference overtime makes. We had 30 minutes of play and eight goals, and we've had 10 minutes already here in this overtime with nothing. But I will say there have been some great scoring chances. Great scoring chances. Nobody really wants to make a mistake. There really hasn't been a mistake per se. It's just been good offense transitioning back the other direction. You mentioned the good defense, too. There's quite easily could have been another goal in this hockey game already. Here comes White. White slowly, methodically working the play up the floor. Combs was providing an escort for him, just trying to kind of skate right in front of him the length of the rink. Well, White, White making a veteran play. Combs not really going too far out of his way. He's just skating in his path. And White skating intentionally behind him, using Combs as that screen. So Shane Fox slows, thing down, slows things down now. 425 left to go here in our first overtime. 4-4 four, four our score here from the Hershey Center in Mississauga, Ontario. $15,000 will go to the winner. $5,000 will help dry the tears of the loser here in this one. Closing in on four minutes. Fox still back there. Up here at this end of the rink, we've got Combs and Cody Kettler. Now Fox sends it over to White. He's watched there closely by Novak. Novak backs up, gives him some space. Novak, good stick there by Kyle to send it over on the boards. They send it back the other direction. Here comes Archie. Archie walking in. Archie shot, and it's gloved there by Redman as Nielsen Archibald has a good shot on the net for RPD. Yeah, Archie uh, last year had to leave. He was a member of the Snipers, had to leave before that pro final because uh, his wife going into labor early. So obviously as a child, almost one year old yep. right now, and uh, had a chance to celebrate. Here come the Snipers back the other direction. It's Brandon Hawkins. He had the game-tying goal with under a minute. He's got Kramer cruising in front. Hawkins shot. The puck is way up in the air, and Corey Kettler gloves it for RPD. Long pass up ahead to Kyle. Kyle working one-on-one -on, -one on Kavai. Here comes Kyle stopping, and he kind of lost it, so he had to slam on the brakes. Corey Kettler back. Hawkins giving him chase. Hawkins all over Corey Kettler now, trying to get the stick in there, giving him the business. All in a legal fashion and forces the turnover. Kyle Kramer up with the puck. 3.05 left to go here in overtime. Here comes Kramer. Kramer makes a move. Kramer looking, waiting, shooting, and that one just goes wide of the net. Oh, so close there for Kyle. Meanwhile, this Kyle, Alex, comes back the other direction. Alex Kyle shot fought off. Rebound is right there. He goes down in the heap. The puck is in the corner. They sweep it behind the net. It goes into the far side. Tommy Bruce can't get to it. Instead, it comes out first. To RPD, Zach Lane has to be careful with a rolling puck there. Here's Spezia. Spezia with some space, trying to get those Jets fired up. And here he goes. Spezia up across the red line. Works it back over to the center of the rink to Novak. Novak walking down. Novak with the step. Novak shooting, and that's kicked away by Redman. Both goalies making excellent saves here. White chipped it into the corner. It hit the official. White gets back control. 2.18 left to go here in overtime. Tell you what, Alex, there have been chances on both ends. This is an exciting contest all the way through. Here comes White across the red line. White walking in. He's got Novak there. Novak, oh, what a stick there by Novak because he came right off the hip of Combs and he got some space, but Novak got the stick in there. And I think you're seeing Cody Kettler talk to the official about a possible interference. 
this know, it, it, yeah it's tough we it's kyle, a gray area it is yeah. definitely a gray area we had kyle suture crash in the net a little bit of a bump there on lane but i think what would have happened there had that stick not gone uh gotten, we would have had a really crazy situation in overtime but if that puck would have gone in the net i think the official would have been forced to wave it off because uh suture was definitely too aggressive going to the net in the crease made contact with the goalie Face off controlled by the sniper. Suture sends it back into his own end to Fox. Fox has to be careful. He's got Spezia eyeing him down all the way back in behind his own net. Spezia finally peels away. Under two minutes to go here in our first overtime. 1.45 left to go on our clock. It says 4-4. Four, four. The period says 3. We typically don't play three periods, Alex. We only play two here in roller hockey. But this time we may get a full 15 in. 1.35 left to go. And we're still tied up at four. And if we do finish this period out, we will go to another overtime where teams will switch ends, and it's still sudden death. Has there ever been a double overtime Narch Pro Final? You're putting me on the spot here, Jeremy, but as far as all of the Narch Pro Finals that I have attended, no. All right, so we may be seeing a first. However, still one minute and 11 seconds remaining. Clock is rolling. Kavaya back out onto the floor, replacing Suture now. Kavaya takes possession of the puck. He's watched there by Novak. Kavaya trying to walk his way up. He scored an overtime goal in the D1 championship game here before. And he had quite the celebration too. That was back for AKS in 2009. Or maybe not 2009, another year. But yeah, it was another year, I believe. And so on that play there, you saw Matt White kind of throw his head up and almost like disgust. And I think he was not happy with Kavaya taking that shot there. Now we have a face off and the chance of RPD taking the puck back. White trying to creep in just a bit. They put it back in play. Combs tied his man up. It's a three on two if they can get possession of it. Kavaya really had to smack at it. Puck was bouncing. Here comes a chance. They feed it on the backside. Oh, what a poke check there by Redmond. They feed it back in front. Another chance here for RPD. Oh, my gosh, what a play there by Troy Redmond. He sold out there. It's going to be one or another. It's going to be a goal or an amazing poke check. Puck is tied up there on the end boards. No movement by either player. They let him try to play it out. 25 seconds left to go here in overtime. It continues to roll. The officials communicating with him. Finally, RPD takes the puck. It comes out to Cody Keller. Keller fires and scores! Cody Keller wins the Unbelievable finish to this hockey game. Puck in the corner. I thought RPD was way too aggressive, sending three guys after the puck. They end up getting it out and getting it to Keller, who fires home the game-winning $10,000 goal. I tell you what, that shot almost looks like we'll have to see a replay of it. Did it get deflected? They continue to battle away. There's the pass in front. The big shot coming up. Did it get deflected off I, Shane Fox? It looked I like don't think so. I Redmond think... went down low, but the shot goes up high. It's hard to tell. Oh, boy, what a cannon there by Kittler. I tell you what, there are not a lot of slap shot goals in roller hockey, Alex. There, there are not a lot of them, but Kettler gets the clapper there to go and win the 2017 Narch Pro Championship. Well, congratulations to Joe Cook and RPD. Well-deserved here. We had two great teams. Only one can win, though, and it's RPD winning $15,000. I tell you what, your final score here as we get ready to have our award ceremony. RPD takes it down 5-4 to four over the Snipers in overtime with only 13.9 seconds left to go in this one. And RPD off the stick of Cody Kettler wins it by a final score of five to four. Jalen Krogman with the assist on the goal. Cody Kettler with the game winner. So that does it here in overtime. Your final score in this one five to four here in the overtime game we'll go to our award ceremony coming up next what an exciting nurch pro final to finish up the pro division here at the 2017 finals your champions rpd by a score of five to four over the labeda snipers
Our top goaltender in the Pro Division faced 178 shots, making 163 saves, a 9-1-5 save percentage. From the Snipers, Troy Redmond. Congratulations to both Troy and Matt as our individual award winners here in the Narch Pro Division. Finally, if we can have RPD out to accept the trophy as the winners of the 2017 Narch Pro Championship and $15,000. Congratulations to Team RPD. <laughs>